good afternoon everyone welcome to the channel in today's video i want to talk about conditional ddpm i previously made a video on unconditional ddpm probably three weeks ago and in this one i'll use the same code so i am not typing it up from scratch i will just make some changes that is required to conditionally generate outputs using random sampling so let's get started the conditioning will be done using the labels of n misp images so <coughs> i'm just going to run the cells so this is the libraries that we need then we are defining the device after that we'll load the nmesp asset you can uh, randomly show to example i have shown here you can show more or less from the training data set and also from the test data set then we need to define the data loaders then here we need to make some changes so i put hashtag in the lines where change is required so since the conditioning will be done using the labels we need to provide the labels here and send here as well so changes in two lines okay then show how the information in the image is destroyed during the forward process or diffusion process so this is a image of five so with each time step we add noise i have shown 11 time step starting from one then a gap of 100 all the way up to 1000 so here this is just pure noise then we do not need to change anything in the race block no change in the cell protection part no change here as well no change in the upload either then here we need to make some changes in the condition unit part so we need to provide the labels Okay. So this is we are providing the classes. There are ten classes in MS data set. Then another instance variable. Okay, so then another change here. an embedding table where the num embeddings will be total number of classes and embedding dimension will be equal to the time embedding dimension okay then we need to make change here this is the image time embedding and the labels then another change here so we need to add the labels after providing them through the embedding table with the time embeddings here to conditionally train, train the ddpm model so here save dot embeddings so I think so 
the then change is there so number plus it is 10 and three input are required xt levels so levels will also be 64 This is the size of the image. This is uh, time embedding. It will be same as that size. This is the label, same as that size. So this goes as input to the unit, and we get the same output. If you're interested, you can investigate the automatic layer output. Same as so. Okay. Then here we need to make a change. So for the number of classes. Okay. Then finally we print. Here we need to use the labels. We didn't. Then we need uh, another line, so the labels are also required to. We also need to uh, send the labels to DPS. Okay, so then we need to pass the labels here as well. Okay, same changes. So let's see if it is fitting correctly. Oh yes, so now the model starts training. So I think it will take probably 35 minutes or uh, close to 35 minutes so I'll join after the training is finished okay the training has been finished we trained the model for 20 books and uh, now let's check the losses so you can see the training and test loss after 20 books gradually decreasing Now we will see the reverse process output. So it will be conditioned on label.
something that I don't know there. So this is the reverse process output condition on label. So this is pure noise and gradually noise is getting removed. And here you can see it looks like nine I guess. Which we were supposed to get as from here. Okay now end of something. Copy these lines. So now this will end up be simple 64 images. This is capital capital. So we'll sample the images for these digits and sequence will be required okay the random sampling has been completed now let's the output okay i don't think it's logical to take all 64 it will take more time so let's take first try here 74100 mm, yes 74100 and also check the last try you can check the others by yourself so 55362 so this is two but it doesn't look that great Six three five and this is also five, but it's confusing. It looks like six or something. Maybe it's five, but it looks like six. Okay, so this is how we can train a conditional data gram, and the conditioning signal here is the image labels of the image data set. I think if you train it a little bit longer. These outputs will look slightly better than what we got here, but these are also okay for understanding from human perspective. But uh, I suggest if you need to use this model, better train it for 40 books or 50 books, then see what happens. Okay, so that's the end with this video. It is a short one.